Okay, so when it comes to vehicles that are kind of dogged for being unreliable and high maintenance, the Range Rover is definitely something that comes to mind. It's built by Land Rover, a British company that's been sold several times uh, over the past two decades. And um, I'm not gonna lie, they are very nice vehicles. This is a 2019 Range Rover SE. And honestly, like I've dogged these out, but you know, at this day and age, too much is given, much is required. And that's the situation with pretty much all cars now. When you want all the bells and whistles, it takes a lot to kind of make that happen, to have a large SUV that's powerful and then is comfortable. Um, and you can also drive it, you know, in a sporty manner. It, it takes a lot. And so, you know, with that is going to come higher maintenance cost and more maintenance. And that's okay when you get to this level. Um, I really, really like the look of this SUV. Very, very classic luxury. Now, between this vehicle and this Mercedes GLE, I would say the Range Rover is more prestigious. Um, I think it's in a different tier a little bit, but I don't know. I might go with that GLE. Um, I mean, these look cool, but they've looked the same for a while now. And again, this is a 2019, like very good lines, dope headlights, dope wheels. Um, this does have a supercharged V6. So you'll notice that about Range Rovers. They use supercharging versus turbocharging. Um, but their interiors are always dope. Um, stepping in, obviously you have leather, soft touch, soft touch. A ton of speakers here. It looks like we have Meridian sound system, which is fancy. It says low battery, please start engine. These things kind of sip on the battery while they sit. Um but I love the screens in here. I don't normally like the double decker style, but this is executed in a very modern way. But if these screens go out, you're screwed. You also have screens here and you have buttons here that aren't labeled. So you definitely, it's it's like the restaurant with no prices on the menu. You're, 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 you're most definitely sitting in luxury. The seats are comfortable. They're not perforated, but um, you know, you have your, opening for your glove compartment there that's pretty fancy okay ah this opens too okay that's dope all right and then like the layout for the doors and stuff that's pretty cool it sits up here the mirrors here but uh it's just an interesting interesting theme that nothing's labeled but I would say, you know, if you can afford it, these cars are worth the headache. I mean, I've ridden in them a couple times. Super comfortable, good power. Um, you know, you're not going to be keeping up with a Porsche in these. They're not made to handle that way. Start buttons up here. You know, it's 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 one of those, I don't want to do anything, you know. And, um, you know, one of those vehicles where they kind of think for you. So, the seat's comfortable. Hopping in the back seat. Um, you know, there may be a little bit more room on the other side. So, this is a sport model. Um, again, not a bad angle on this SUV. Unmistakable silhouette design here. Um, you do have dual exhaust here. Love the clear tail lights. Um, this is definitely going to be electronic. Now, the battery is low on this vehicle, so it is not going to operate the power tailgate. That is okay. You have good room back here. What you notice on luxury SUVs is how the wheel haunches kind of come in a little bit because they have a lot of electronics in them, especially if you have all wheel drive. So that's going to be a thing. Um, it's crazy something to note how much quieter Infinity motors are than even on Nissan. Their motors are way, way quieter than Range Rover, Toyota, Mercedes, all of them. Um, anyway, back to this vehicle. One of the things I like is that it does have a rear wing over the hatch here. That's super dope. And we'll step in the back from this side. I like how this is kind of blacked out. Um, I could even have the wheels be all black on this vehicle, honestly. Um, so stepping in, there's a little bit of a step up height if you're under six feet, but you have good charging ports down here. They're gonna be USB-A, which is fine. I'm kind of disappointed you don't have climate controls back here, but um, 
you do have LED cabin lighting and you do have the Meridian speakers in the door. This is soft touch. Everything's soft touch. I like this. Um, these feel very nice, very tactile. Uh, these seats are comfortable. They're not well bolstered, but they're very comfortable. And you feel like you're sitting in luxury. Um, you do not have a sunroof in here, but, you know, it's very, very comfortable. This is very much a four-seater car. You can seat five, but it wouldn't be comfortable. You have matte pockets back here. I mean, I'm not showing you nothing you haven't seen, but, uh, yeah, these are super comfortable vehicles. So, there is a reason people buy them. So, I like the little faux almost vent there. Same thing here. Um... We'll take a look under the engine compartment. One thing I will see. say when I'm popping, when I was going to pop the hood is that I wish this did have metal uh, in the pedals down there um, and right there. I'm sure you can get that in a trim package. But, you know, I kind of wish that was standard, but um, everybody is copying Range Rover now with the letters in the back. The Pathfinder's doing it. The Sequoia's doing it. The Palisade's doing it. The Telluride's doing it. And you have a supercharged V6. Which is definitely a British thing. Like Jaguar had a supercharged V6 back in the day. Um, I think it was a 3.3 liter or something like that. Nothing uh, you're going to be working on down here. You're not even going to be checking or changing the oil. Uh, I'm sure this is a longitudinally mounted engine. Uh, which is great. But that doesn't make it any more simple. Other than the fact that I feel like supercharging is simpler than turbocharging. So yeah.